Yeah, yeah. Welcome, bite. It's Monday. R- rookie mock. Rookie, rookie mock. We've got the opposite of a rookie joining us today, though. Mr. Ray GQ over there representing Destination Devi, Wake Up TV. It's sad that, you know, Jordan Rich couldn't uh, come on the show with us. I, I would have loved to just like bust his balls. I know that y'all go back and forth. I, I was looking for a tag team. I didn't know how it was going to work out if it was me and Jay Rich on top of you or if it was you and me on top of Jay Rich. But but I know one way or another, I was just going to be the bait and start to like cause problems on the show. But we're here to run through a rookie mock draft for the 2023 class we're doing the first two rounds uh it's been difficult to find any sort of realistic mock drafts nfl because just like us a lot of people are getting into the rookie mode where it's like we don't have 60 70 players off the rip that we can just like analyze at any given point these nfl mock drafters have to go through 260 players so right now we've been able to get you know two three rounds but we did find a full seven round mock draft for y'all it was from draftcountdown.com from Shane Hallam. So we're going to go through, I mean, we're not going to go through all seven rounds, but we're going to be able to do a two round rookie draft, super flex, half PPR based on the full seven rounds that we got. Uh, we'll go pick for pick, pound for pound, click for click over here. And uh, and that's, you know, that's what we go. Uh, that's what we got going on for today's video. Ray G, how are we, buddy? We talked for a minute before the uh, before the video. Sounds like life is good over there. You're chilling. You're not at the Super Bowl, but you're you're here relaxing and grinding in another way. Yeah, man, it's always good to, to be on with you, Nick. You know, you're one of the people in this space, man. I respect uh, tremendously, man. We probably could have had a whole a separate show from the things that we were talking about in the yeah. pre-show format, man. But it's it's rookie season, baby. It's it, this is the this is what we do. This is the time, man. And it's it's an, it's an exciting class. And you know, it's it's just tough trying to find an a semi decent uh, NFL mock right now that's longer than a round or two, but. Thanks to Shane, we got uh, we got seven rounds of data that we can kind of play with to make this mock as realistic as possible based on the landing spots and the draft capital. So I'm excited to be here, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I almost don't really care if it's accurate at this point in the season because there's so much going to be changing between now and the NFL draft. It's almost like for the purpose that we're doing it, we need it to be just within the range of outcomes and a lot of exciting players. Like I did a mock draft last week based off of two rounds and there was only two running backs picked. So it was Devon A. Chain and B. John Robinson. And like every comment was like, how do you not draft Jameer Gibbs? I was like, he wasn't drafted in the first two rounds. But I also feel like there's going to be a lot of situations where things like that don't happen so it's good to get a wide variety of the nfl draft uh, of these mock drafts because like rarely ever does shit play out the way that we think it's going to play out from an overall like draft class standpoint obviously you're someone who's deep into the college players you're doing devi you're following these players throughout their careers for the most part and and in depth way more to a level that most people are not from just like an outside view of this draft class obviously there are some top names like Bijan's a fucking blue chip guy a lot of strong quarterbacks at the top of the class that'll go early in the NFL draft not really a clear wide receiver one like how do you see this class playing out because I think last year was you know a lot of good players but typically kind of overwhelming or underwhelming excuse me relative to like the three years prior to that where do you see this year playing out yeah man this is um I think it's a good class you know we, we you get to that point every year where people start uh bitching and complaining that this class isn't as good as we thought it was I think it's a solid class man the strength no doubt is the running back position it's deep man you've got 15 cats that could probably see their way on the field as rookies I think we have interesting quarterbacks the wide receivers I 1000% agree with you that there is no clear-cut number one right now and you know last year there was some complaints about the tight end class not being that good we got good tight ends for, for you know what we're looking for from a fantasy perspective so while there may not be a ton of blue chip caliber prospects there's not a Jamar Chase, a Jalen Waddle, a Najee, an ETN, a T Law of Fields like 2021, or you look at 2022 with Brees Hall was sort of the blue chip prospect, Drake London, Garrett Wilson. You don't have a lot of those guys in this class, Nick, but I promise you there are so many players that you're going to be able to fill out spots on your dynasty rosters with this class. So I think it's a really good class. It's deep, it's polarizing. And I think it's going to, I think unlike other years, Nick, I don't think we're going to see consensus 
anywhere outside of B. John Robinson for the most part. And we say that every year, but even more so this year because every one of these guys, you mentioned A-Chain. Well, he's little. Bryce Young, he's small. Anthony Richardson can't complete a pass. <laughs> I just think it's going to be just from, from across the board, there's going to be a lot of variance. And depending on what community you're tapped into, it's going to probably influence that ADP. Yeah, I think that's what – honestly makes for like a fun rookie draft because if there's no consensus RB2, anything from RB2 to RB6 is going to be up for grabs. Anything from wide receiver one to four is going to be up for grabs. Like even the QBs, like sure, maybe Bryce Young is the first one picked and a lot of people go with him consensus, but there are going to be people that like Will Levis. Like as inconsistent as his tape is, they're going to say he's high uh, athletic. He's like got some upside. He's got Herbert in him. He's got some people saying Allen, whatever the case may be for that. But it's like there if there's no consensus to it, that means there's so much value from like pick 103 all the way down to 109 where it's not like we have these six players they're awesome everybody else like stinks and fall back a little bit so for me it's an exciting class even if the high-end talent necessarily isn't there um and speaking of communities to be tapped into Rays is one of the best in the game so i will link all of his social media youtube all that stuff down below if you are not already following the man one of the best at what he does in the biz this mock draft so you guys can follow along will also be linked down there it'll be one of the first links from draft countdown dot com let's uh let's make this easy for you ray we'll kick things off and at the 101 i will allow you to do the honors <laughs> oh yeah you i mean it's super flex single quarterback no quarterback doesn't really matter <laughs> Uh, B. John Robinson is one on one. But let's let's not overthink it. Um, you know, I, I've 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 posed the question, Nick, and really quickly, I'll just ask: Is there any world, any landing spot in which you think in Superflex a quarterback should be taken over B. John Robinson? Well, I I don't think there's necessarily a landing spot per se. I will say that um, in this mock draft, by the way, guys, he went first round, twenty eighth overall pick to the Cincinnati Bengals. So one of the more interesting landing spots that I've seen for him in NFL mock drafts. This would be weird. It, it would probably point towards Joe Mixon being out of there. His contract is not up. For me, for, for Bijan to drop somewhere out of the 101, he would have to go outside of the first round, and he'd have to go somewhere where like whoever the lead back is is in contract for at least one more year. Other than that, if someone's going to use a first-round pick on Bijan Robinson, I expect him to get first-round touches immediately out of the gate. So I don't think there's a landing spot that will actually change anything for me. I think it's more of like draft capital being later combined with the fact that now he's in a spot where he's going to be in a committee. I don't know anywhere off the top of my head necessarily, but like if he goes to Detroit, I think that's weird. Like in the second round where like A-Chain got picked in this draft, if he was like 55th overall, which is not going to happen, but I'm just kind of like speaking out loud here. If he goes 55th overall to like Detroit and Swift is there, we know Swift is there for at least another year do they sign Jamal like that's a weird situation where you're not going to get the ceiling out of Bijan at least for another year or two but Bijan at one like I'm not going to argue it unless he falls into the draft for whatever reason yeah that's my bad I probably should have said uh for the purposes of this exercise where he got picked the draft capital I, I'll, I'll get it right on at 103 I I'll like that right I got to slam you for that because I know like when yeah, I listen to yeah. you and, and Jay Rich uh do your drafts together you I, I I could tell just by listening to you it gets under your skin when he doesn't hit the people with that information right away and I was like Ray just the fucking poison of his own medicine right there <laughs> <laughs> all right um so with the 102, I will take the first quarterback off the board. That was Bryce Young. He goes second overall to the Houston Texans. I feel like this is pretty much the center sentiment around like dynasty and rookies and quarterbacks in particular. It's like we're not good at projecting how good they're going to be at the NFL. I'm going to let draft capital kind of dictate things in the super flex league. Yeah, he's undersized, but he can make all the throws. I'm not I'm really really not too worried about his size and him getting hit that often because the way that the NFL plays nowadays, like he can't hit quarterbacks anyway. So he's taking probably 50% fewer hits than he would have taken, you know, five, 10 years ago. Um, so I'm not really worried about him, you know, standing upright. They obviously have some figuring out to do out there in Houston when it comes to weapons, but they did go in on some weapons after Bryce Young in this draft. So we'll have some more equipped, ready to go by the time next year comes around. They're obviously just a franchise on the rebuild. And it's not like any of these rookie quarterbacks are necessarily going to step in and be like, a top 12 quarterback for you year one so if we're assuming all of them are going to need a year two years to develop I'll take Bryce Young top of the capital here I like it man um any questions man any any concerns about him being 5'9 five, 5'10 five, sub 195 I mean just from a football standpoint man I know he's the first quarterback off the board in this mock probably the first quarterback off the board in the draft but just you've seen the pictures Nick you see the chatter I mean is there 
concern that man is this is this type of dude gonna hold uh, i i think like naturally you kind of have to be concerned about it there is a it's kind of like with wide receivers where it's like okay you can be skinny and tall or you could be a little shorter but also like compact and thick i don't want both of them side like put together i don't want a small and a skinny wide receiver like those are the dudes i stay away from i guess you could say the same with uh with the quarterbacks you know but my thing kind of goes back to like if an nfl team is not worried about a guy like bryce young at that size yeah then I probably won't be because if they're not worried about it, that just means his leash is going to be long, right? Like they're not going to start him for two years and be like, ah, he's too short for us now. Like they drafted him knowing what the size was. You'll be able to get value in return from him if you want to move on at any point, because if you're the second overall pick, you're getting years of, uh, as long as he doesn't get hurt, which I guess could be a size concern thing. But again, I'm not really too worried about him getting hit. He's a smart quarterback. He plays smart. He doesn't take like a ton of hits there. So uh, I think naturally you have to be a little bit concerned, but I'm not going to let that cloud my judgment on, on how talented I think he is. Got you, baby. So I'm up at the uh, 103, and I, too, am going to go to the quarterback well. And I'm not going to take one of my personal favorites just yet. But at 109 in this mock from Shane, Carolina Panthers took C.J. Stroud, quarterback out of Ohio State. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take him right here. I think he's the – I feel like I know what I'm getting from C.J. Stroud. He may not have the upside of Bryce Young or Will Levis or Anthony Richardson, but I, I like Frank Wright in Carolina. I do like – the fact that they have uh, DJ Moore, and, and I feel like they're headed in a better direction. Stroud, from the pocket, he can make every throw. He can use his legs, but that's probably not going to be his calling card at the next level. But you give him time. They invested a first-round pick last year on Iki Ikwanu at left tackle. They've got pieces around uh, to help build with C.J. Stroud in a division that's awful. The NFC South is awful. So I, I'm not worried about the Falcons' D-line. I'm not worried about Houston Texans Relax. up front. So I'm just, I'm just saying, baby. I'm Relax. just saying. So give me C.J. Stroud, and I'm not – concerned about the narrative around Ohio State quarterbacks at some point one of these one of these dudes got a hit CJ Stroud give me him at 103 yeah I know it's so early in the process but realistically the way I'm looking at it is outside of something crazy happening in the NFL draft for me it's gonna be young Stroud Will Levis um you know unless young drops to like the 22nd pick overall and Stroud's the top three Levis is top five outside of anything that's not normal and not what we've been seeing in mock drafts it'll probably go young Stroud and for me I will take Will Levis here at the fourth pick he goes with the fourth pick in the NFL draft as the quarterback two off the board to the Indianapolis Colts now they also have some figuring out to do at um at many positions out there and realistically they don't have too strong of a weapons group like I like Michael Pittman Alec Pierce is you know whatever Alec Pierce is at this point uh Jonathan Taylor's a beast their offensive line was decimated last year and took an absolute turn for the worst so he's going into a weird situation but he's also a dude who like makes a lot of plays and he's he's my third quarterback I think I don't know if I want to say by a wide margin but he's got by far and away the most inconsistent like film you see the upside you see the plays but you you never know what you're really going to get from his arm you're you know you're going to get a really strong arm you know you're going to get someone who's not afraid to take chances you know the other thing I like about Will Levis is he's such a fucking warrior on the field that his teammates are going to like him a lot of times you see these rookie quarterbacks like get onto the field and they struggle and then the teams kind of turn against them but if you're Will Levis even if you're struggling just from like a basics talent standpoint you know he's fighting his fucking dick off to get that first down run for it so teammates are going to have his back regardless of probably the talent level in year one or year two which is another thing I like about Will Levis um I will take him I'll take him here at the 104. Like the pick man and I think some of the criticism that he's getting right now is kind of unfair and then to be honest with you it doesn't fucking matter if the NFL is going <laughs> to take him inside the top five he's big he can make every throw you got to go with Will Levis but I'm I'm still not going to do it because I want to I want to stay true to the exercise and uh right now my top wide receiver in this class is Ohio State receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba. He's the third wide receiver off of the board per Shane's mock, but I absolutely love fourth wide receiver off the board. Four, yeah. But I love I love the landing spot. Uh, he was selected number 25 overall in the first round to the New York Giants. Listen, Daniel Jones breakout season under Brian Dayball, who just won coach of the year, and he did it with Isaiah Hodgins being his best wide receiver. And I like me some Isaiah Hodgins, but if that's your best wide receiver, you probably can stand for an upgrade. I saw what Dayball was able to do with Josh Allen when he paired Josh Allen with Stephon Diggs. I think this type of receiver who wins quickly in the short intermediate quadrants of the field would be a would be a boost for Daniel Jones. So at this point, I know some running backs got picked and all that other shit. 
I'm a wide receiver whore, and you give <laughs> Daniel Jones a weapon like JSN here in the first round, I feel comfortable taking him here at the 105. What's uh, what's JSN going to do at the – I agree with you. I, I had a really hard time. I put him as my wide receiver two in this draft because I really like Jordan Addison, but JSN, like that landing spot with New York on the way that offense is kind of ascending right now is really hard to slip by. What's he going to do athletically? Like JSN, he's not going to – he's not going to like – tear up the combine right no no i i think he's a better athlete than people give him credit for but he's not a size speed freak he's not it's not gonna look it's not gonna wow you but listen cooper cup didn't wow you i mean i can go down the list of wide receivers who didn't wow you athletically listen it, when you go out there and you drop 1600 on the same field with marvin harrison jr Je, uh, uh chris olave e e garrett Ibuka, wilson and garrett wilson I'm not going to overthink this. He's, he's probably pretty fucking good at football. Yeah, he gives me a lot of, like, Amon Ra St. Brown vibes. I know that's a pretty low-hanging, like, comp at this point. But, like, when I watched Amon Ra in college, I was not I was never like, oh, I'm overly impressed by his athleticism. He, like, jumps off the field. That's how I got from him. And I'm like, you just look at the numbers, and it's in, it's impossible to argue against him uh, there at the 105. All right, so we got our first wide receiver off the board. Now we do have a second running back that went in the first round. And I've heard you talk about Jameer Gibbs out of Alabama a little bit on your show he went to the philadelphia eagles 31st pick overall so he does flirt with the 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 back end of the first round and this is another one where like i'm kind of in agreement with you i'm not in love with jameer gibbs as a runner and i know i've seen like the alvin kamara comps but i feel like that's just because he kind of looks like him on the field and he also wears that like tape on the back of his arm that only alvin kamara fucking wears so i get where the resemblance comes from he is an awesome pass catcher and i think he'll be used in that sense miles sanders is a free agent so there's a really good chance he's not back with philly if that's the case i kind of want to just look at the first round draft capital and be like i'm pretty good i'm pretty set on what that means for a running back now i think we've probably seen philadelphia and seen like what they want to do with their running backs i think it's likely going to be a committee in some sort of way no matter who's back there but if jameer gibbs is going to get 15 touches five of them being you know targets per game He's going to have a, a, a great like weekly floor, a great weekly ceiling, I think, in this offense. And first-round running backs, first-round rookie running backs always get extremely high touch count. So, Jameer Gibbs, I, uh, I actually threw something on Twitter the other day because uh, Noah Hills was doing like a comp video on our on our channel a couple of days ago. And basically, he went through like the top or 10 running backs, and he went through like their comp at 90%, 60%, and 30%. And I think his 90% comp for Jameer Gibbs was Reggie Bush. And I was like, man, that's actually like a really, really good comp because Reggie Bush was never like an overly talented running back as a pure rusher, but just such a good athlete that it translates on all different parts of the field. And when I was watching Jameer Gibbs, I'm like, good runner, of course, has explosive plays. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Curtis Samuel. I know it's it's a little bit different, but like weaponry and what they do well and what they don't do well are a little bit similar. So I get kind of the same vibes. But you give me first round capital, a guy who's stepping into a situation where the, the I mean, the Eagles offensive line, Jalen Hurts, like so explosive. So like, I don't know, look no further there for me. Yes, you're not overthinking it. He's he's one of the top backs in this class. You, you, you're only, what you're hoping happens with Gibbs is they utilize him in the passing game because that's what will maximize his value. But first round running back on a great team, you don't want to overthink that one too much. So I like the pick. Uh, I am going to take uh, with the 107, my wide receiver two currently in this class, Jordan Addison, who went 12th overall to the Houston Texans in this mock is the first wide receiver off of the board. And, you know, you're pairing him up with Bryce Young. So you're getting your quarterback of the future. You're pairing him with your wide receiver of the future. I've gone, I've gone all over the place with my sort of play style comparisons for Addison. He can play in the slot. He can play outside. He's a smaller wide receiver. He's not as tall as Devontae Smith, but he's probably going to check in. He's probably not going to weigh a ton, but I think we're at the point now, Nick, where, I mean, no one can get fucking hit in the NFL. You can't hit yeah. receivers high. You can't hit them low. So the size concerns don't really bother me as much. He can create separation like that. Uh, he's got good speed. I've seen him command a, a ton of targets. So you, you draft this player with the 12th pick overall in the draft. You pair him with Bryce Young. I, I, think, you, I've, I think you have a safe wide receiver. Receiver. I, I don't know. I have no clue it, it, what his ceiling is. I'm seeing people say Garrett Wilson. Like, first of all, can we stop comping every incoming rookie to like the elitist of elite, right? Yeah, like, I think not... Garrett Wilson is better than him. I think Devontae Smith is better than him. I do think someone threw out like a Tyler Lockett comp, which I thought was fantastic okay. because like Wilson will probably step into 
elite territory this year as far as like a separator, like maybe into the Stefan Diggs realm, in my opinion. Smitty's like a, a whole nother person when the ball is in the air. You know, I, Jordan Addison is as smooth as they come running routes and stuff, but I don't know if, if he really uh, – has like the elite elite traits that those dudes have. I think I think the comps are great because they're stylistically the same. But I think in terms of skill level, I mean Lockett's been a baller for a long time, um, and I think uh, I, I think that's that's probably about right. Yep, yep. there it is, Jordan Addison, man, one hundred and seven. Okay, so I do think there is a little bit of a tier drop off here. Now that we got the QBs out the way, we got the first round running backs out the way. There are a few different ways to go here. And I think this is a pick that I'll probably regret given where the next running back went off the board. So I'm going to let you have him. I'm going to go with Jalen Hyatt here, wide receiver out of Tennessee. Oh, with the, uh, spice. Yes. So he was a fifth wide receiver off the board, but he gets first round capital and he goes to Buffalo. Hyatt's obviously a crazy downfield playmaker, fast as shit. I do, I do have concerns about him as a player. I don't know if he's, he had the monster Alabama game and he had a few other a handful of games that were really big this year. Um, two of them came against no-name colleges. The other two came against good schools. I think it was Kentucky and someone else, but those those games were f just littered with broken coverages, which you know inflated the stats to a crazy degree. Hyatt's a playmaker, and a, this pick to me, first round to the Buffalo Bills, is just a clear replacement for Gabriel Davis. They're like, he's not going to be the guy for us downfield. If we want a deep a deep playmaker with Josh Allen and Hyatt's going to be their first round pick. I'm, I'm trying not to overthink it. There is a, a part of me that's like, you're going to, you're drafting a guy that you're not completely sold on, but like, I don't know. I, I just like the situation too much to pass on it here. I think it's a surprise pick, but I actually kind of like it. You replace Gabe Davis with Jalen Hyatt. Good things are probably going to happen because he's a better player than Gabe Davis. Let's just leave it at that. So I don't think you'll regret it. Uh, well, you might regret it because <laughs> the guy that I'm going to take here at one nine, I'm not waiting any longer. Listen, I know you said you've got got your one two three quarterbacks i'm taking anthony richardson right here he went right. at the top of the second round uh 238 so the what was that the sixth fourth pick six i can't do fucking math close uh, enough yeah. yeah close enough it, to the las vegas raiders at 38 overall i understand didn't play a ton completion percentage was low I don't give a shit about any of that. If all I have to do is spend the 109, the 109 to potentially get a guy that can literally be an absolute game wrecker for fantasy football purposes, that's that's as cheap. You're never going to get an opportunity to get somebody like this any cheaper, man. This is what's going to happen. Once he goes to the combine and he's six foot four, 240 pounds, he runs a sub four, five, 40 yard dash. He throws the ball out of Indy. People are going to be in. I'm not missing out. I've seen Justin Fields be successful while not being the best passer. We saw the step forward that Jalen Hurts took. Anthony Richardson is a guy that I am betting on the tools and the traits. And I know we're doing this based on the mock, but I do not believe, I do not believe he will be a second round pick when it's all done. And everybody comping him to Malik Willis, that it is, it's the <laughs> laziest analysis that you, this dude did it in the SEC in 13 starts. Give me Anthony Richardson and the potential at 109, man. Yeah, that upside is too crazy to pass up on this point. I feel like we've learned our lesson enough with the Jalen Hurts and the guys you named and stuff like that. It's like, how many times are we going to do this before we realize that Richardson, he just needs to get on the field. Like, again, and he doesn't even need to be that good of a thrower because he's so athletic. Get him onto the field. He's going to average 40, 50 rushing yards a game. He will connect on some of those deep passes. Uh, the Raiders, you know, if he gets on the field this year, he's going to be playing with Devontae Adams. If, if that goes through and it's like, man, who, who better of a first weapon to fucking be able to throw the ball to so a rich i love the pick i thought you were gonna go with zach charbonnet here so he goes second round 51st overall to the miami dolphins the third rb off the board so i'm gonna take him here at the 110 now zach charbonnet he kind of seems like james connor reincarnated but probably i don't want to say better because james connor has had like a very good nfl career so it's hard to just be like he's better because he's an exciting new prospect but kind of similar play styles i think a little bit more explosive you look at like just some of the numbers like top 10 in the ncaa and yak per attempt uh 15 plus yard runs he was fifth in the ncaa his elusiveness 25.1 percent broken plus missed tackles forced per attempt 25th top 25 per sports info solutions this guy catches a ton of passes and when he does so he looks damn good doing it um, smooth, natural pass catcher, can play on all three downs, you know, six, whatever, six foot, 220, something like that. So he's got the size and he's going to Miami. It's just a really, really good offense up and coming that you want to be a part of. And they've got nothing in that backfield that makes you scared of competition. So second round running back, uh, I mean, he's going to get every opportunity in the world to run away with this job. Son of a bitch. You sniped me, man. I thought I'd be able to grab him here at the 111. I love me some Ma. Charbonnet. Uh, yeah, you got me. But at one at 111, fool me once, shame on me. 
Uh, shame on you, fool me twice. Whatever the damn saying is, I'm going back to TCU. I, I know I liked me some Spiller last year, but the biggest miss that I've ever had is Jalen Rager, <laughs> wide receiver out of TCU. And I'm doing it again. I don't know what to think about Johnston, to be honest with you, Nick. I get he's big, he's fast, he's he's got all the tools and traits. I, I don't know, man. But in this mock, he went 23 overall to the uh, to the uh, Minnesota Vikings. You're pairing him up. You know he's got no shot of being the wide receiver one there because that's Jefferson. But that this could be a good thing for Jefferson and Quentin Johnston. Pull some coverage away. Definitely good for Kirk Cousins. I'm curious as to your thoughts on QJ. I see the tools. I see the traits. God damn it. At some point, Josh Doxson, Jalen Rager, Quint one of these TCU receivers have to hit. Please let it be Quentin Johnson here at the 111. Yeah, I mean, good good draft cap, obviously, 23rd. The Vikings, are, it's an interesting spot. I mean, obviously, they, they need to replace Thielen. They need to get another wide receiver outside of Jefferson to take some pressure off. And Quentin Johnson's, man, he's like one of the most unique skill sets we've seen in such a long time. He's like, he's so tall and lean, but he's so quick and agile and he's so like fluid with his movements on the field. It's like Martavis Bryant, but like probably maybe better running routes, I guess. I feel like Martavis Bryant was a playmaker, right? He was like a guy like you get the ball in his hands and let him do shit on the field. Whereas like Quinn Johnson does feel a little bit more like a, um, a wide receiver. So he's got like such good quick twitch ability relative to like his size so i uh i like it man I, I like the pairing i've seen a lot of mocks where he goes to like baltimore or spaces where it's like you're not really sure what kind of target share he's going to get you're not really sure what kind of like qb is going to be throwing in the ball but kirk cousins is safe he's he's someone that can deliver the ball to you so i'm in on quentin johnson here i like it all right well shit you're up 112 who oh, you taking boy. who you take go do it go do it go take him i know who you want to take go take him no 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 not not that early he's he's i know he's gonna sit there for me for a little <laughs> while fuck okay i'm 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 gonna take uh I'm going to take the last first round wide receiver selected that we still have sitting here on the board. And that is Mr. Zay Flowers out of Boston College. He goes 22nd overall to the Baltimore Ravens. Now, there's a lot of shit up in flux right now. We don't know what Lamar Jackson's situation is. I think there's a real chance he doesn't end up in Baltimore last year. You'd hate to see it, but I think it's a possibility. We don't really know what else they got outside of... Um, out of Mark Andrews, right? Like as, as a weapons group, as much as I like Rashad Bateman, it's like, is he, is he going to be a thing? Like he can't stay on the field. And when he does, it's like the production is inconsistent. Say what you want about the offense. Zay Flowers is another dude. Like this class is, is really fun from like a skill set standpoint. When you look at dudes like Quentin Johnson, and then you look at Jalen Hyatt, like they're explosive playmakers that do a lot of things that you don't see often. But then you got this group of like Jordan Addison and Zay Flowers and Josh Downs, who are just like as smooth as they come when it comes to just like being able to control your body and running routes. And I think um, I think that's exactly where Zay Flowers fits in. He is uh, a guy who's going to play in the slot a lot, a guy who's going to be able to get open all of the time, a guy who's going to be able to handle those dump offs, but he's pretty explosive. Um, I just think, you know, again, draft capital, 22nd overall pick, a guy who is going to be able to get onto the field and play and be impactful immediately. All right. I like it. I like it. I like Zay Flowers. He's a good player, man. Oh, that's, uh, shit, that's round one. You want to recap that bad? I got it all written down. You want to recap it? You got it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right, so that's round one. We had uh, 101, Bijan Robinson, 102, Bryce Young, 103, CJ Stroud, 104, Will Levis, 105. We had Jackson Smith in Jigba, 106, Jameer Gibbs, 107, Jordan Addison, 108, Jalen Hyatt, 109, Anthony Richardson, 102. 10, Zach Charbonnet, 111, Quentin Johnston, 112, Zay Flowers. And again, if you want to follow along, we have the mock draft that we're working off of in the description down below. Ray, why don't you start us off with round two, pick 13, 201. Okay, it's not quite get your guy season yet. I still have to lean on the capital to some degree. And although he's wide receiver seven off of the board, I like the landing spot. Um, This team, the Tennessee Titans at one point this season, Nick, they had three, I mean, one, two, three active wide receivers on an NFL game day. That is... I mean, when you have Derrick uh, Henry, uh, uh, you, you, you could have two and you'll be fine. Yeah, so I'm going to take Josh Downs, who was damn near top 40 pick in this draft wide receiver out of North Carolina. Downs was drafted 41 overall to Tennessee. Listen, uh, I love me some Traylon. They, Robert Woods, I appreciate everything he did for us in fantasy football, but his best days are long gone. They need more weapons. It, they, they, they obviously are devoid of pass catchers. They, they can't score um, outside of Derrick Henry for the most part. So Downs in Tennessee, while I'm not, I don't love the landing spot, 
You bring Ryan Tannehill back. Remember all that Kyle Phillips hype last year? Josh <laughs> Downs is infinitely better than Kyle Phillips. So uh, right here at the uh, top of the second, I'm fine taking Josh Downs. Yeah, I love Josh Downs. He's one of my favorite receivers in this class for sure. I am praying that he goes to Atlanta. He's like, I mean, he's smaller, but he, he's another one of these guys. So fluid, such a good route runner, going to play primarily in the slot, but has like that spectacular catch ability where he, he goes crazy sometimes. He's a contested catch guy. You could just tell he's typically going to be the best athlete on the field every time he steps on it. He does like everything pretty damn well. So Josh Downs, I love that pick. We are on the 202. Didn't really know where to go here. I'm actually going to take the first tight end off the board michael mayer tight end from notre dame goes first round 16th overall to the washington commandos so i'm gonna grab him here at the 202 and i'm not normally the dude that capes up for uh tight ends in rookie drafts but i mean that capital is serious we're talking about like near tj hawkinson level of capital where hawkinson was a top you know five six seven rookie pick during that year i remember uh, michael mayer has been uh, an incredibly productive receiver uh, as a tight end notre dame every single year in terms of like a share of the offense which is what you want to see from a prospect at the tight end position uh, 16th overall capital the washington commanders have always used their tight ends man like if it's logan thomas if it whoever it is in that slot always tends to get a ton of production and you know i'm not expecting him to do it year one but this tells me they're going to give him every chance during his rookie contract to be the guy there. So I'm not going to think too hard about it. Great college player, really high draft capital, good enough landing spot for me. I like it, man. I like it. Um, here I go at the 203, and I just feel like this show is just destined for us, Nick, because here I go drafting a TCU wide receiver that burned me in the past, and I'm back to the Texas A&M pool. And apparently this oh, is the shit. better of the Texas oh, A&M running okay. backs. It's the, this is yeah. the one that's supposed to be good. So right here, I'm going to take Devon A-Chain at 203. He was drafted at with the 55th overall pick in the second round by the Detroit Lions in this mock as the RB4 off of the board. And I'll tell you right now, Nick, I think there's a chance he is the third or fourth running back off of the board, especially after the combine, as long as he's not like 5'7", 170. Yeah, what do you think he's actually going to weigh in at? Because, like, obviously, you know, there's been reports of everywhere from, like, 170 up to, like, 185, 190. And I feel like, who was I watching today? I was watching a film of, like, Tajay Spears, who's, what, 205, maybe? 200, yes. 205? I yes. feel like A Chain, I mean, maybe I'm reaching here, but when I'm watching the film, A Chain doesn't look that much smaller than Tajay Spears. He doesn't. So, right? He doesn't. And Tajay was listed at 195, and he comes into the senior bowl at 204, and he didn't lose any. Here's the thing. I, I don't think he's going to be like 200 pounds. As long as A-Chain, if he's 190, I'm good, man, because he's not going to be a guy that you pound the ball with. You, you, you're looking for 11 to 15 touches, receiving game, getting him off tackle, but his speed, man. I mean, this is the type of cat where it's not going to take him much for the fantasy community to be like, I need a piece of that. So... The landing spot's not great, but I just, I wonder if this would be more of an indictment on DeAndre Swift, or is this Jamal Williams isn't back and we need to, you know, we need to add another weapon. This offense is fucking fantastic. They've got a great offensive line. They got fantastic weapons. Ben Johnson is in a phenomenal play caller and they're playing indoors, uh, you know, half of the season. They draft a chain. I think it'd be a good thing. You get him indoors on a fast track. It could be fun in that backfield. The landing spot does scare me. I love HA man. I think he's I think he's actually like a super good runner in between the tackles too. Yes. Like I think he's really underrated. He's not just an explosive dude. I think he's got great vision and like patient with the holes and then knows when to burst through when he sees one. I, I, him going to Detroit is we like Swift will be a free agent after this upcoming year, right? His rookie contract will be done. Uh Jamal Williams is the free agent right now. I feel like it'd be crazy for Detroit not to re-sign him after being like the heart and soul of that team. That scares me is like where does A Chain fit into that backfield? Is he a one for one replacement with Swift probably unlikely and it's like based on the way this team is made up they're like made from toughness like they want dudes like Jamal Williams on the goal line so it's like I feel like no matter what direction they go with in terms of personnel running back they are going to want a dude like that who gets the short yardage valuable goal line back so this is actually one of the few I feel like landing spots that does scare me a little bit for uh Devon H and I've seen him go to like Dallas in a mock which I thought was fucking awesome if either Pollard or Zeke is out of the equation um, but Detroit, do, I, I'll say Detroit does scare me a little bit. But I mean, second round draft capital, that's uh, that's that's nothing to fuck around with. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, while we're on uh, running backs that are beloved to us, I'm going to grab the Atlanta Falcons running back that they took ah. in the third round here. Kendra Miller out of TCU, fifth running back off the board, um, third round pick, 75th overall. So early third round, 
which does not guarantee him a role immediately, but I say it, it, it allows him to fight for a good position. Obviously, Tyler Algier is there, had a great rookie season, and I think they will be uh, in some sort of competition. He's obviously got the starting job to lose. Cordell Patterson, I don't think, will be there next year. Kendra Miller was one of the funnest players to watch on tape, in my opinion. He's, like, really slippery for no fucking reason. Like, he's not overly, overly athletic, but dudes are just sliding off of him. He gets skinny in between the tackles. Like, he's really good at reading stuff. He, he just, I don't know, he's one of those guys that you watch and you're like, man, why does he break? Like, I think one of the telltale signs of being a good running back is, like, straight up. Do you make the first guy miss? As long as it's not a gang tackle coming at you, like, do you make the first guy miss? Kendrick Miller almost always makes the first guy miss. And I'm like, that is step number one to being a good running back at the NFL level. Uh, I love this dude. I think he was one of the, again, funnest tape watches for me. Going to my Atlanta Falcons, maybe it's a little biased. Maybe it's tough to see him have a real path. But, like, quarter round Tyler Algier split carries pretty damn evenly throughout the entire year third round capital is better than Algiers last year fifth round capital so I love KJ Miller man uh he's one of my favorite backs in the class we are simpatico baby because I oh. love him too and he's moving like that at 220 pounds so yeah. uh this is the type of cat that I think he's the real deal and with this type of capital listen no very few NFL teams are just turn around and giving one guy the ball It'd be a dangerous backfield. Good luck having to deal with uh, Algier and Kendra Miller all day. That doesn't seem fun at all. So um, here at the 205 spot, I'm going to dive back into the wide receiver pool and take the six wide receiver off the board. Top 40 pick to the New Orleans Saints, Rasheed Rice out of SMU. Uh, look, It's looking like the Saints are going to get them some Derek Carr. And uh, while uh, Chris Olave is a stud, we, we see that. Outside of that, I mean, Rashid Shahid, he, he serves a role screaming down the field. MT's probably not going to be there. And they have no, they, they were rolling out Kevin White, Nick. Kevin <laughs> White was catching Let's passes go. for the Saints last year. So, Kevin White, those were fun uh, rookie. Rookie debate times, Kevin White. You know, I, I saw I got to spend some time with Rasheed Rice. We he actually shared we broke bread together on an elevator, French fries. Uh, he's a big dude. He's a big dude. He's physical. Did you offer your fries to him or vice versa? Man, he said they smelled good. He was like, dude, where'd you get those fries at? Man, it smells so good. And I was like, you know what? I'm from Dallas. You're <laughs> from your Dallas. <laughs> yeah, you 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 got it, Rasheed. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I think this is a pretty good landing spot for him. No shot, in my opinion, for him to be the quote unquote alpha on that team for a solid probably wide receiver three that can maybe give you some wide receiver two weeks here and there I like the spot for Rasheed Rice to New Orleans yeah I agree with that I like the landing spot in the draft capital like early second round Saints if they get Carr I like that more than I like the player I think uh I think he's got a long way to go as a receiver I think he has some like elite skill sets like uh when he's on the sideline like his body control and being able to come down with some like Mike Williams types plays are something that like any NFL team can use and he's able to do contribute in that way immediately I do question things outside of like if he's actually a good receiver um like separating on most routes feels like every time I watch him run a route he like falls down like he's always like stumbling and shit for no reason so I uh I question the talent but like in that situation that's definitely one that can thrive you have dudes that were uh Rashid Shahid, like he's dropping a fucking 60 piece every other week. I'm like, he, you know, Rashid Rice can can do that. So um, that's 205, right? 13, yes. 205, yeah. 205 with the 206. I'm going to grab Kayshawn Boutte, wide receiver, Ooh. LSU, 10th wide receiver off the board. He goes third round, 68th overall to the Denver Broncos. Now, you could probably put more context behind the lifeline or the life cycle of this kid at this point because you've been following college. I know he was an incredibly, like he came into LSU when they were a powerhouse as an offense, obviously, right? He came in that the Jefferson Chase year? Yep. Well, he was right there uh, right after that year, I believe. Right after that year, 2020, 20, Yeah. Okay, right so it was Jefferson like Terrace, Mar Terrace Marshall was supposed to be like the alpha and then Booty came in. Is it Boutte? Correct. Or Boutte? I thought it was Boutte, but they keep calling him Booty. So I, <laughs> I, I think it's Boutte, man. Boutte, Booty, I'm, I'm going to go with Boutte out of respect. Yeah, so Boutte yeah. comes in and then he, yeah, I mean, he has this monster like first year while Terrace Marshall is supposed to be like the guy and he gets his, his name put on the map and then kind of like blows up and then things kind of get a little wonky like there's a lack of production his final year when he was supposed to be like a big time player I I saw like an above average player on pretty much every part of the field and it feels like there's upside given like the amount of 
hype and the amount of production he had at an early age, like the quarterback change and there was problems with the head coaching and shit like that. So like, I don't want to like wipe out the final year of his production, but I feel like there is a way that you could talk yourself into saying like, oh, here's the reason why shit went downhill. Cause he was arguably, you know, a top three wide receiver in this class preseason. He was my number one wide receiver coming into the season, man. And it was just, they had a new coach, Brian Kelly from Notre Dame. There, there are reports out there that he had like attitude problems and shit, but I didn't, I haven't heard any of that from people that I know at LSU. I, I honestly think Nick, I mean, that your it name, just, your, your last name is booty, bro. Like you're probably getting trash talk uh, all fucking day. Like I'd be, uh, I'd be a little angry too. Yeah, man. I just think it just, he just had a bad year. He's still a talented player. Um, you know, he's going to test well. He's got the LSU bloodline. I still think he's good. It's just, it was just, it was disappointing for, for having him as my top ranked guy coming into the season to see how that played out. And they got a cat right now named Malik Neighbors that thoroughly outplayed him during, as a true sophomore. He's going to be a fucking stud too. But I still like Butte. We just, you just hope he'll be able to find a spot to where he can put it together. And in this mock, uh, going to Denver, uh, listen, uh, Sean Payton, you know, Russell Wilson. It can't be any worse in Denver than it was last year. I'll say that. So um, I like it, but I'm, I am I really like this 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 cat that I'm about to get right here um, at the 207 spot. Fast riser. He's been all over the Twitter, Twitter airwaves over the past couple of weeks because of what he did in Mobile. But the young man can ball. And I'm talking Tajay Spears, the running back from Tulane, who was drafted uh, 96th overall. So back of the third round by the Arizona Cardinals, who – are probably going to be a horrible team this season. Kyler Murray's knees messed up. James Connors, he's just James Conner. But I think this is a good spot for Spears to to get some action on that field. He he would look much more explosive than Connor from day one, and maybe he would show enough in his rookie season in tandem with Connor to end up being the lead guy when Kyler Murray returns to full strength in 2024. Late third round capital. There were a couple of running backs that went ahead of him, but I just I don't think they're better players than Tajay Spears. I do think Spears is going to get day two capital, so I'm fine with taking him here in the middle of the second round in this mock. Yeah, I like that. I was I wasn't sure where to go because there's this group of like third round running backs that I kind of feel like drop into the same tier all around. So it's a landing spot game. I think what I'm going to do though is wrap up the actually it's not wrapping up the second round wide receivers, but there is a second round wide receiver that I do still like on the board going to Seattle. Second round, 52nd pick overall, Cedric Tillman, wide receiver out of Tennessee. I was watching his game film this morning to get a better idea of like how him and Hyatt kind of fit together. This dude's like a this dude is built prototype, man. Like 6'3, 215. He gets off the line pretty well for his size. Good playmaker, good ball skills, good uh good hands. It almost feels a little bit similar to Keyshawn Boutte, honestly. Maybe like a uh maybe a discount version of him. He is a fifth year senior, which is obviously always problematic. Like the first three years he had borderline no production at Tennessee. Um, but if you do look at the players that were on the team while he was there, like 2018, Marquez Callaway, Josh Palmer, Juwan Jennings, Ty Chandler, a bunch of NFL players same roster the next year 2020 was Josh Palmer uh Vilas Jones Jalen Hyatt Ty Chandler shit like that um and then 2021 when he finally got his chance when all those guys went to the NFL uh he kind of led the group in receiving yards like he was better than Vilas Jones he was better than Jalen Hyatt last year so he had his true breakout year 2021 once he finally got the opportunity uh you hate to see like someone break out that late but I do think again that is uh a reason that you can put context behind him as a player. He could be he could be a true X at the NFL level. I just think that like what the word X means is not what it meant 10 years ago. Like a true X at the NFL level does not mean you're Andre Johnson catching 100 and fucking 11 passes a year. Like an X is a role that now NFL players play where it's like, I don't know, maybe uh, what we thought Brian Edwards was going to be or what like Nico Collins kind of is with the size, the strength, things like that. He brings a lot of good to a receiving group in my opinion. Yeah, he's a good player too, man. Uh, don't get it twisted. If had he not been injured this year, as crazy as we are, are, you know, think about Jalen Hyatt and his ascension and being like Cedric Tillman would have been right there for a yeah. high second round pick, maybe a back end first had he not been hurt. So I like the pick here at the 209 spot. I'm going to go to the running back well, and I'll take a player who was drafted 88th overall by the Jacksonville Jaguars, the other Texas running back, not named B. John Robinson. Roshan Johnson and Nick, dude. I think his official height and weight was six foot two twenty. This dude looked like he was six three two thirty. 
in person. I I'm mean, glad you took him because I haven't. He's one of the yeah. He's one of these top backs that I haven't got around to watching. And I know like I could just tell from the outside he's a guy who is gonna continue to rise throughout this draft process because he's been so overshadowed. But like he's clearly a good player. Like most people, by almost all accounts, people are really in on this kid. I haven't got around to watching his game film yet, so I'm, I am I am intrigued to, to hear more about what you have for him. Yeah, and and here's the thing, man. If you are able to work yourself onto the field with Bijan Robinson and take any amount of work away from Bijan or be used yeah. side by side next to Bijan, you're probably pretty good. And here's a little insider about Roshan. Apparently, that same sort, those same sort of intangibles you talked about with Jamal Williams, he was like the leader of the Texas locker room. There's there's a lot of positive reports that this dude was a professional. I know it's small micro data points, but he was the first running back in drills and the first running back to receive snaps at the Senior Bowl over Chase Brown, over all those other guys on his team. So he's already viewed as a professional. I know my friend Jordan Reed from ESPN said before the Senior Bowl, the fact that he can play on special teams as well is going to be very attractive for NFL teams. He can pass rep. He can catch the ball. He's got the size. With this landing spot, Travis Etienne's dope. There's no doubt about it. But I think it's a good like, compliment. I think it's a great compliment. It's a great compliment. And then it's like the fucking Paul Pierce. Around. Every other player <laughs> limping off the field, but then he comes back in and he's fine. So I just think as much as they want to run the ball with Doug Peterson, we know Doug Peterson likes a running back by committee. This is a great compliment. It's an upgrade over James Robinson and Snoop fucking Connor. So this should be a this would be a nice tandem backfield Roshan and ETN. Yeah, I think this is a great like real life NFL pick that will translate into fantasy production. So I really really like that. I'm I'm excited to to jump into his tape because I think ETN with with a guy like Johnson, his size and his like power and ability will be such a good tandem for years to come. I am gonna go with at the two ten. I am taking the sixth running back off the board, third round pick, eighty sixth overall to the Baltimore Ravens, Tank Bigsby out of Auburn. Now I am not overly high on Tank Bigsby. I know he's also gone through his like Keishon Boutte route where he was wildly hyped up after his freshman year and then kind of never really took the next step you know you could say it was Auburn's problem old line QB whatever the case may be it's like uh, a little bit of like the camp makers thing where it's like you eventually just want to see that elite jump to tell me that you're a top five prospect in the class on film I didn't really love Tank Bigsby to be honest when I dove into the numbers though everything about them said he was a good player yards after contact broken tackles elusiveness like all that kind of stuff I think the thing I like most here is it's going to the Baltimore Ravens, right? Third round pick where it's like Dobbins. We don't really know what Dobbins is going to be at this point. Like, what does he end up like when we look back on his career? Do we ever get a full year out of J.K. Dobbins? Probably not in Baltimore's offense. Um, him and Gus Edwards are both free agents after next year. So it might take a second for him to get onto the field. But this seems like Tank Bigsby could absolutely be a part of a committee and the Ravens committees are always like successful committees year over year over year. So do I think the upside is there for him to be an RB one in the NFL? Unlikely, but I, I do think there's value to be had in his backfield. I like it. And I agree with your, uh, your rationale for tank and tank Bigsby there. I mean, it's Baltimore. They're going to run the ball. So he's going to get carries and I, I'm not overly thrilled with him, but I think he's better than Gus Edwards at this stage of Gus Edwards, career. So, uh, you got to replenish it. And it's listen, my heart wants to go somewhere else with my final pick, but I, I want to try to do this as realistic as possible, man. And whether I don't care, insert whatever running back, I don't care what name it is. A running back is drafted by the Dallas Cowboys on day two they're oh. going to they're going to be coveted for fantasy football man so here with my final pick at the 211 spot in the uh BDGE DD uh rookie mock 1.0 I'm gonna take uh Zach Evans who was drafted by my Dallas Cowboys in the third round the 90th pick overall I'm just gonna say this man I'm not a big fan of his game broke him down with my patrons last night I think he's a runway running back if there's a lane he's gonna hit it and he's big and he's fast and he's strong he doesn't have any creativity there's little wiggle he, he can't really catch the ball but this pick would signify to me that the Dallas probably moves on from Ezekiel Elliott Tony Pollard uh, is 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 going to be a stud, but he still needs somebody to take some of those early down, hammer it in type carries. And Zach Evans can do that, man. There's no question that his size, physicality, Dallas has an above average offensive line. So if the Cowboys draft him or whomever it may be, whether you like the player or not, I'm playing the format. I'm playing the capital. I got to take Zach Evans here at the 211 spot. Yeah, I, th I think the way I look at him is almost exactly the same as you. Like this dude loves contact. Like he was, it's like he's got a magnet in his 
his helmet and like there's another magnet on the defender's player's chest like that's it's the first thing he looks for and like I, I broke down some film on him too and there, there's so many plays where it's like okay there's two holes one of them is occupied by multiple linebackers and one of them is an actual hole and he just decides to go straight <laughs> head first into the linebackers and I'm like man like what are you looking at here and, and there's like a, a part of that that I appreciate where it's like you're running the play that was called for you but the lack of creativity leaves so so much yardage on the field uh, but he is a runway player like he's going to end up probably doing well at the combine and having like a pretty nice speed score if he can weigh in at a high uh, at, a, at a high weight so there are like parts of his game that can translate at the next level but yeah he needs a runway to probably like make those explosive plays happen uh, otherwise he's going to be like a really tough player on the football field that you want on your NFL team because he's going to like put fear into the fucking defenders but overall uh, I think he can be an early down part of uh, of an NFL committee almost like I don't know kind of like Isaiah Pacheco right and obviously that he's looked at in a great light right now because he's on the Kansas City Chiefs so of course like yardage and production is much easier to come by Isaiah Pacheco in uh, a decent and average offense a below average offense it's not someone that we're like overly obsessed with but I think that's probably a type of role where like Zach Evans falls into all right so we've got the last pick and since I already took a tight end. I'm not going to go with Dalton Kincaid here and occupy two of my 12 spots with tight ends. Although first round tight end, 24th overall pick, that's probably assuming Evan Ingram's on his way out now. And that would be a pretty prime spot to land with T law. I'm going to go with uh Hendon hooker here, quarterback out of Tennessee, third round pick 82nd overall to the Tampa Bay bucks have no idea what ends up coming of this pick. Uh, he's got the injury that he's going to be. I'm not sure. Do you know when he's going to be back from that? ACL? I have no idea. It's probably middle of the season before he's like like ready. You know? Okay. Yeah. Regardless, I, this is like a long term pick where it's another guy that has the upside of being uh, a real NFL quarterback. Like prior to the injury and prior, probably prior to that, like Georgia game, he was you know he was on track to be Heisman winner, possibly top five NFL pick, all the good shit, and then it goes right out the window. So there's going to be a team that takes a chance on him. He will step on the NFL field within the next two years. Anytime you have a super flex quarterback that steps on the field, it's like value goes up. I also think he does a lot of good things. Like he he has an extremely strong arm and he's a talented quarterback. Whether or not that trans to the NFL field I don't know but the back half of the second round of rookie draft where I'm looking at the players that are left and I'm not I'm not licking my lips at, at anybody here right now based on landing spot capital tight ends all that kind of bullshit so give me hand and hooker here fuck it I like it man I like it and he's one of those guys where with your final pick in a rookie in your final pick in the second round of a rookie draft like the reward even, even if you don't believe in him if he gets named the starter you know after a sec you can just flip them. It's super flex. You can flip them for more than you invested in them. So I like I like the pick. I'm I'm fine with the hooker pick as well, even though he'll be 35 by the time he starts <laughs> his first game. I mean, here's the thing though with the ages. It's like even if you come in at 24, 25, 26, like NFL teams, if they're if if you hit with an NFL team, you're playing till you're old. Like it doesn't it's not like you got the window to play like, oh, you're 29, you're finished now. So if it's like if you hit at 27, you still play till 35. If you hit at 24, you could play till 35 too, and it's a little bit longer. But as far as like dynasty is concerned, you're never keeping a player on your team for like 10 years anyway. So oh. I'm not really too worried about the uh, about the age. Who who would you have taken at 24 here? Would you have gone Hooker? I think Hooker was probably the better value play. I do have a lot of interest in Kenny McIntosh. I'm, I don't. I just don't like the landing spot. I thought about Kenny. Too, with, yeah. I just. I mean, playing behind Saquon, you you're you might get five touches a game, maybe. I don't care how fucking good you are. So I just. I don't know where else you would go. I'm not taking a fourth round running back over Hendon Hooker. I'll tell you that. So I, I think Dalton Kincaid probably would have been the pick, but for the sake of the exercise. I mean, you had already you had already tapped a tight end, so I'm fine with Hooker there. Yeah, I'm just trying to have some fucking fun over here, but I, I do like Kenny Mack over there. That was the only guy like talent wise that I was like, man, I yeah. want to grab him and have him on my team. But I mean, landing in New York, that that's they're going to resign Saquon probably soon. He's going to be there for four or five years. That you're just yep. you're just trapped there. Um, and I'm sure I'll have some good games over the course of his rookie contract. But if you're in New York, you're you are. Fu I hope I hope Kenny McIntosh goes to like like Baltimore or some shit. I hope he goes somewhere where he can kind of contribute immediately because he's a he's a player that I think will probably be underrated in this class. Can I ask you why you didn't want to touch uh, a top 50 wide receiver, uh, the number eight wide receiver off the board, Tyler Scott, going to New England? Uh, Because I don't know anything about him. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few guys I didn't know anything about him. And I remember, like, when you showed, when you sent me over the link to this mock draft, I was like, man, I got some homework to do. Like, who the fuck are these wide receivers, man? Like, who is, uh, who is Tyler Scott? Who is Charlie Jones? Like, these just feel like made-up-ass names. So I was like, you know what? Uh, they're just going to go... 
and probably have a non NFL career. There, <laughs> I, I, well, who tell me about him? Is, is he worth looking I, at? He's, oh, the other thing, actually, wait, I did go to watch tape on him this morning, I think, but there's no <laughs> all 22 tape on him that I could find anywhere. So I'm like, I'm watching clips where he's, it's like they point to him and then he's off the screen. I'm like, I can't even see him run his fucking route. Yeah, he's fast, man. He's he's very, he, I, I I text you, he reminds me of this year's D- Dwayne Eskridge. Mm. He's super fast, but listen, man, you get that type, that's not the type of receiver Mac Jones needs. He doesn't need someone that can just scream down the field. I just, I don't trust, Bill Belichick drafted a super fast, fast guy in Taekwon Thornton last year. We ran a 4-2, and look how far that got us. So I just, for me, I the landing spot didn't do it for me, man. I think he's a decent little player, but... 5'11", 170. Guy. Yeah, I, I hope the... I hope the Pats go with, like, if you're going to go with this style of play, go with one of those three or four guys that are, go with the Jordan Addison, use a premium pick, Josh Downs, yeah. Um, yeah. Zay Flowers. Like, all those guys are, like, better versions of Jacoby Myers, and he was such a big part of their game plan. Now he's a free agent, so might not resign with them. But, like, those guys are, I think, our replacement pluses for what they have going on in New England. So, yeah, I don't give a fuck about that guy. I'm not watching this film. Fuck it. There you go. Let me ask you one more. Uh, Tank Dell. I know you saw a lot of hype about Tank Dell coming out of the Senior Bowl. Wide receiver out of Houston. Led the country in receiving last year. But he's 5'8", 160. Nick, what? I mean, how many times are we going to do? I, I'm just, but I'm telling that's, you right that's now. It. That's it for me right there. No chance. It, you don't, you don't, he's five, good, eight, one sixty. Like I said, you could be short and thick, or you could be tall and skinny. You could have one of those two that are you can't have both. way below average. You can't, you just can't have both unless you're Hollywood and you get first overall or first, first round draft capital. Uh, that's not happening for Tank Dell, right? As far as I'm concerned, I don't know. No, he's not going, no, he's not going first round, though. No. Yeah, no, no may, that's just may, maybe back of the second, maybe best case back of the second. Yeah, he's another guy I gotta watch. I gotta watch more of. Watch him, okay. watch him. Watch him. He, he's, 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 I know people are going to point to Tutu Atwell. Tutu Atwell, all he could do was run fast. Tank Dell is a real fucking deal, man. Just, just okay. watch him. I'm not saying he should have been within these top 24 picks, but I am curious as to what you think after you actually watch him. All right. I will take a look. Um, where do you, where do you get your all 22 film from, by the man, way? Man, there's actually, there's actually a cat, man. Here, I'm, I'm a kick game to everybody watching this. His name is uh, Caddy's Cut-Ups on Patreon, man. It's like two bucks, two dollars. And he cuts them up, Nick, and he, they, he cuts them up by player. So you don't even have to fucking watch the whole game. It's like, I just want to see Tank Dell's clips. And his name is Caddy. But you can get it on Patreon, man. So shout out. I don't know him or anything, but two bucks spell that? a month. C-A-D-D-Y. Caddy's Cut-Ups on Patreon. All right, hell yeah. We're going to link that down below as well if anyone wants to get on. We're about to we're about to pay Caddy's rent real quick. Yeah, yeah. Pay that rent, man. I just subbed a... And, and yeah, you can get like different packages, but the base entry thing is two bucks a month, and he cuts all the guys up for you. So you could just go watch that specific player, uh, their All-22 film. Shout out to Caddy, man. Hell yeah. That's a beautiful thing. I'm about to go sign up right fucking now after we finish this video. There you go, baby. There you go. All right. Uh, well, that wraps up this mock draft. As uh, I've mentioned, we'll be doing this every Monday. I'm out of I'm out of office next week, so I don't know if Monday next week we'll have something live. But uh, Ray, we'll have to bring you back on for a full thing with Jay Rich, maybe in like a month, a month and a half when we're closer to the NFL draft. Maybe post combine, we could chop it up a little bit. Um, and and when I'm more acquainted with the um the Charlie Joneses of this class, we can, <laughs> we can go into all the fake players as well. Uh, when we have time but you know two rounds 60 minutes this was an absolute fucking novel masterpiece i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did and you appreciate ray over here of course go follow him subscribe to the youtube channel all that will be linked down below hit the button that looks like this subscribe to our channel if you're new here as well we'll be covering everything rookie and dynasty for the next three to four months as we always do thank y'all we love you ray i love you for joining us as well appreciate your time buddy thank you nick